This tutorial is going to cover parameters, return values, and math methods. Before we begin, make sure that you have Java and the Java JDK download on your computer. You can run java-version in your terminal to check. Also, make sure that you have IntelliJ or some other IDE or text editor download on your computer that you're comfortable using for editing your code. And have ageinformation.java and receipt.java downloaded somewhere on your computer. If you've completed the other tutorials and practice problems on this playlist, you'll have them already. And it's suggested that you watch the previous Java tutorials just so that you're up to date with what's been covered so far. Parameters. So in vocab, the caller is the method calling a method. So it's the one who is actually using the method. And then a parameter is a value passed to a method by its caller. The purpose of parameters. Parameters, like methods, are used to reduce redundancy in code. They're a way to customize what's being done inside a method so you don't have to write a new method for every version of the code. Calling a method with a parameter, or creating a method with a parameter. So here's some ex an example of what the syntax for a method with a parameter is. It's public, static, void, for now, because right now none of our met methods have actual return values. And then method name, the type of the parameter, so this can be int, double, byte, float, any of those, and then the parameter name. And then inside of these braces, you do stuff with the parameter. An example here is just to print it out. So like I said, this can be any type. And then these two have to match exactly. So having a parameter is, a, is like having a variable that's declared like this for the method. And then you have to use it with the exact matching name inside of the method to actually get its value. Calling a method with a parameter. So here's an example of that with the main. You can call it with a variable for the parameter like this. So type x equals value and then method name x or you can call it with an explicit value so let's say that the type was int this would be method name 2 and the name of the parameter that you pass it so it doesn't have to match the parameter name that from the method declaration so here we named it parameter name whenever we were declaring the method and but then we were actually using the method we passed it a variable named x. You can have multiple parameters. So, and these can be of different types or the same types, and you just put them in the method declaration with commas between them. So in this case, type one, parameter one, type two, parameter two, type three, parameter three. And then inside the braces for that method, you just use those parameters however you think you need to. Scope. Scope is the context within which a variable can be accessed. Variables can only be accessed within the pair of braces that they're defined in. So variables defined in the main can only be accessed within methods if they are passed as parameters. Any variables defined within methods can only be accessed within those methods. So this explains why we need parameters for methods that are outside of the main. It's so that those methods can get access to information from the main. Common errors. Some common errors with parameters are calling a method that needs parameters without them or calling a method with the wrong parameter type or possibly even the wrong number of parameters. And both of these things will cause compile errors. Primitive types as parameters. So value semantics means when a parameter, when a primitive value is passed as a parameter, its value is copied over. So modifying a parameter will not affect the, the, val the variable passed in. So let's say that I had, you know, int x in the main that I pass to another method. If I add 3 to x within that method, it won't add 3 to x in main, just in the copy of x for the method that I called. Method overloading. 
Method overloading is when two or more methods have the same name but different parameter list. So this means either a different number of parameters or parameters of different types. Here's an example. I have method two methods called method name. The first one just has one parameter called parameter name. And then the second one has three different parameters. And this allows me to have those two methods with the same name because the computer and compiler are able to recognize them as two distinct methods. So we're going to do this exercise. We're going to edit the age information code, um, so the code in ageinformation.java, to include a method that will print the following information with age as a parameter. So we want to change the code so that there's one method that prints all the age information, a method for the number of decades, uh, for the years into the decade, the way to 100 based on the age, and then the way to x, where x is some given age. So I already have IntelliJ open here. So I'm going to create a package for, for this tutorial. I'm going to call it parameters types, no, parameters return values and math methods, kind of long. Actually, I want to refactor, rename this so it starts with a lowercase. Okay, and then in here, I want to create, I want to go to age information and copy and paste. information with methods. Okay, so now I have this age information with methods class. And you can see it looks like this. And the first method that I'm going to write is the one that basically just does all of this inside of it with age as a parameter. So I'm going to call it public static void print age information. And it's going to take in int age. So I'm going to cut and paste that and then just delete this int age because I no longer need it because it's being passed as a parameter. And then I'm going to call print age information 43. And now if I do run run. It's going to ask me which one. I want this one. Okay, so I printed out the information like I wanted it to. So now I want to create a method for the number of decades. So public static void print num decades. It's going to take in int age. So I'm going to put in this print statement, but I still need the num decades. So I'm going to do move this calculation inside of my method. And then where this missing print statement is, do print num decades h. And now the same thing for years into decade. So I'm going to do public static void print years into decade int h. And again, I'm going to copy this print statement because it's the one that I want. And then cut that calculation so that it has the appropriate information there. And then replace the print statement in the original method with print years into decade and age. And again, another method for way to 100. So I'm going to do public static void print way to 
100 based on int age. And again, copy or cutting the calculation and then replacing the empty space where that print statement used to be with a call to the method. So print way to 100 and then h. And then this over 30, I'm just going to leave it because I um, there's no way for me to calculate it right now since we haven't talked about conditional statements yet. So I'm just going to leave it. And then I want a method that will print way to some other age based on that other age as a parameter. So I'm going to do public static void print way to target age int age int target age. Let's see. Way to target instead. And then it's pretty much the same calculation as way to 100, except now I want to do way to target. And instead of dividing by 100, I want to divide by target age. And this will still be doing that double calculation because I am casting age to double. And now, if I want to, I can replace these two lines in print way to 100 with print way to target age, age 100, right? Because it's doing the same sort of calculation with the same structure and that removes the redundancy that I would have had before. And now I can call that by doing print way to target age with age and 50. And this is something helpful that IntelliJ does whenever you pass explicit parameters instead of using variables for them, it tells you the name of the parameter that you're giving it to, that you're giving it. Okay. And that's it. So I'm going to hit play again to see if this does what I would expect. And it does. So I'm 43, that's four decades. And then all the other information, three years into current decade, 0.43 to 100, 0.86 to 50, and I am over 30. And now I can do print age information with a different age, and I'm going to keep it over 30 just because I have it hard coded that I that over 30 is true. So let's say that I make that um, 32 instead of 43. Now it'll print a second set of age information with just me adding that one line to my code. And that's another, that's just shows a huge benefit of using methods, specifically methods with parameters. You can pass in, uh, you can change what you're passing in and get a whole new set of output without having to change hardly anything about the code that you've written. return values. So some vocab. Return means to send a, out a value as the result of a method. Return type is the type that's being returned from a method. And the return value is the value that got returned from a method. The purpose of return values. Return values are used to give information back to the caller so that methods can be used for things like calculations instead of just printing. Creating a method with a return value. So here's an example. It's public, static, and then type. This used to always be void. And now, if you are returning something, it'll be the type that you're returning. Method name 1. And so you can do it like, th like this with type x. 
and then some code calculation, and then return x. Or you can return an explicit value, like just return value. So this could be public, static, double, method name to return 1.3. calling a method with the return value. And this, so this is how you would call it. It would be type x equals method name one, and then type two equals method name two. And it's important that you save off the answer from the method that you called, or the return value doesn't really go anywhere. It's, it would be exactly like doing three colon in your code it wouldn't actually do anything. And that's this common mistake that's mentioned here, is you have to store is you have to restore the return value from the method in a variable or it won't be able to be used later. Um, alternatively, if you just wanted to print the return value, you could use the method directly inside of a println statement. And you can't overload methods with return values because um, method overloading only works with different parameters. If you try to create different methods with the same name and the same parameters, but with different return types, you'll get a compile error. And that's just because the compiler doesn't have any good way to tell the difference between the two methods when you're trying to call them. Having different parameters gives it context about which one to use, but having different return types just doesn't. So it needs more information. So our return value exercise, we're going to edit the receipt code um, to have the following methods. A method that prints out the receipt based on a subtotal, a method for calculating the total with tax, and a method for calculating the total with tip. So if we go back to IntelliJ, If we'll show, oh, there it goes. So I'm going to copy this and paste, and I'm going to call it receipt with methods. And this is going to mix methods with parameters and return values. So I can do public static void print receipt. And it's going to take in a double subtotal. And I'm just going to cut and paste and remove that subtotal line. And then inside my main, call print receipt with the subtotal. And now, I want a method that calculates the total with tax. So I'm going to do public, static, double, total with tax, double, subtotal. And here, you'll see that I have a compile error because I'm missing a return statement, and that's because it's expecting me to return something because I've told it that I will. So I'm going to continue to get this compile error until I write my return statement. So let's see, I'm going to cut this tax percent and put it in here. And then I'm going to cut this calculation statement. And then I'm going to return total with tax. So now, in my print receipt, I still want double total with tax, but now it's going to be equal to calculate total with tax subtotal. It's better to give your methods more descriptive names, so I, I made it calculate total with tax just so that I, I would be very, very clear about what the method is doing. And this is an example of a method that's returning a variable. And now I'm going to do public static double 
calculate the total with tip, double subtotal. So I'm going to cut this tip percent. And now I'm going to return this directly. In here, I called it total with tax, and I called this subtotal. So you can tell I'm in a compiler because it doesn't recognize the symbol total with tax. So I'm going to change this parameter name to be total with tax. And I'm getting this gray squiggle again because it's telling me it's never used. So now I'm going to put it here. Calculate total with tip. And then I'm going to give it total with tax. And now it's going to do the prints like it did before because these are variables are all still defined. So I'm going to hit play. And you can tell that it did the age information, and that's because age information is still what's selected here. So what I actually want it to run is receipt with methods, but you can tell it's not here yet. And that's why we've kept having to do run run, is that it actually creates the configuration for us that we want. So I'm going to do that again, and I'm going to pick receipt with methods. You can tell that that changed in this little drop down here. So it gave me exactly what I expected. It gave me my subtotal, my total with tax, and my final total. Now, um, it's doing that thing again where it gives me way too many decimal points, and we're going to learn in the next tutorial how to take care of those. But for now, this is what we have for our receipt again. Okay. And... That's all we had to do for this exercise. The math methods. So the math class is a static class with methods in it that can do that can do a lot of calculations for you. And static classes are used like class name dot method name and then the parameters. And in this case, our class name is math. So here's the first set of math methods. There's math.abs, which will give you the absolute value, math.seal, which will move the value up to the ceiling. So it takes in a decimal number and rounds it up always. Math.floor takes in a decimal and rounds it down always. Math.log10 will give you the logarithm base 10 of a, of a number. Math.max will give you the larger of two values. Math.min will give you the smaller of two values. And math.pow will raise the base to the exponent. And something to keep in mind is that most math, most math methods return doubles. The second set of methods are math.random, which returns a double between 0 and 1. And if you want to get a random number between, say, 10 and 20, you would have to multiply math.random and then add to it. Math.round will round to the nearest whole number, and that'll do it based on normal, normal rounding semantics. Anything below 0.5 will be rounded down, anything above, rounded up. Math.square root will give you the square root of the value. And then these three, math.sine, math.cosine, and math.tan, will give you the sine, cosine, and tangent of an angle in radians, and then math.2 degrees and math.2 radians will convert degrees to radians and back. Some constants. There are classes that have constants associated with them, and constants are just variables that have set values that never change that can be used to prevent magic numbers in your code. And a magic number is just any number in your code that looks like it appears out of nowhere that doesn't have any context with it. And in math, the math class has two main constants. There's math.e, which is 2.7182818, and then go ahead, continuing on. And then math.pi, which is 3.1415926, 
continuing out. And they can be used for things like calculating the area of a circle and all that. Some practice for later. You want to write some calculation methods. So a method that calculates the average of two numbers, a method that calculates the average of three numbers using method overloading, one that calculates the perimeter of a rectangle, and one that calculates the area of a rectangle, another one that calculates the circumference of a circle, and one that calculates the area of a circle. And when using these methods, be sure to print out their values with the appropriate context, just so that you can make sure that you did them correctly and that you know how to use them within the right flow of a program. And that's it. I hope that was helpful.